Welcome back everyone. This video is the first video in a new short series on approximate structural analysis. This video will focus on indeterminate beams and future videos will focus on frames either under gravity loading or lateral loading. So approximate analysis, why in the world would we need to use this? There's a couple of good reasons. First of all, it gives you a nice gut check if you're just in the preliminary design stage. Secondly, if you have some computational results, you can get a quick check to see if you're at least in the ballpark or if you've designed something horribly wrong. And third, it's very useful on multiple choice exams, such as the PE or FE exam, where you have a structural analysis problem and you want to get a quick result that can eliminate some of the obviously incorrect ones. Let's begin our discussion of approximate analysis with this fixed fixed beam. We know the answer to this is a very well known problem where we have negative moments at the two ends of 1 12th WL squared and a positive moment at mid span of 1 24th WL squared. Now for purposes of approximate analysis, we don't really care about those exact moments. What we care about is the inflection points, which is the locations where you have a moment of zero. Now the whole point of the approximate analysis that we'll be discussing here is that we can take any inflection point, any location of zero moment and replace it with a hinge and it will not change our system. So for example, if I look at these two inflection points, if I put a hinge here and here at the same location as those inflection points, that's roughly 0.21 times the span length from your end. If I analyze this system with the hinges, I should get approximately the same answer as if I analyze the system without the hinges. That's because adding these hinges, locations of zero moment, if they're at the location of the inflection point, does not change my results. However, knowing those points of zero moment does help me out quite a bit in my analysis because now this is a determinate system that I can solve. Let's do it. So for this determinate system, I have approximated that my hinges are 0.2L uh, because it's an approximate analysis, that seems close enough. And I have three free body diagrams for this. And so let's consider that middle free body diagram right here. I'm going to have two upward forces, they obviously, have to be the same because of symmetry. So both of these are 0.3 WL, and I'm going to have equal and opposite forces downward on my two cantilevers on the two sides. So therefore, considering this cantilever, I can solve for my reaction force and my reaction moment. The reaction force is pretty simple. It's just 0.5 WL, no surprises there. And the moment I can solve for by considering sum of moments equal to zero for this cantilever here. And if we do that, we'll find that this is 0.08 WL squared. That's pretty close to 1 12th WL squared, which is approximately equal to, if we change that to a decimal, 0.0833 WL squared. So not too bad, and my vertical reactions in this case, of course, are exact because of the symmetry of this problem. So this process we can repeat for any system. What we're gonna do first is look at some canonical systems so that we can get a feeling for where do we place the inflection points. So here's some of our canonical systems. One of them we've already dealt with is the fixed fixed beam. So of course our inflection points for a fixed fixed beam with a distributed load is about 0.2 WL. Really it's closer to 0.21 WL, but for purposes of approximate analysis, that's close enough. Next, let's look at this fixed pinned case right here. This is only going to have one inflection point and it is going to be at the quarter span 0.25 L. And if we look at a pin pin case, we don't have any inflection points, traditionally speaking, because we know that we have zero moment at those two ends. Now let's consider a few other cases. What happens if we look at, for example, this pin fixed case, but we choose to rotate one of the ends. So let's take this end over here and rotate it, for example, counterclockwise. What is that going to do to my inflection point? Well, if we rotate that point counterclockwise, if I draw my deflected shape, it's gonna look something like this. It's gonna deflect down from my load and it's gonna come up like that. This looks sort of similar to the uh, simply supported case. 
So what's going to happen is my inflection point, which used to be at the quarter span for this system, is going to move in that direction closer to the support because I'm getting closer to a simply supported case. So the inflection point here, it's where my curvature changes from the positive curvature to the negative curvature, is going to be some distance less than 0.25L. Now, how much less than, I don't really know. It's somewhere between, obviously, zero right here and 0.25L. I don't know exactly where that's going to be. Um, so it depends on how much rotation you have there. Now, if I rotate this in the opposite direction, let's say I rotate this clockwise, my deflected shape is going to look something like this, where it's going to deflect slightly upwards over here um, because of this end being rotated that way that's going to push my inflection point further out. So it's somewhere right about here. It's not at the point of zero dis displacement. It's at the point where I have positive curvature changing to negative curvature. So that distance right there is going to be greater than 0.25L. So the point of this discussion is that end rotations, either clockwise or counterclockwise, are going to either push away or move your inflection point closer to that support. And this works for any of the systems. The same applies to the fixed disk case above. Two more cases that we'll look at. What if I have end rotation only at one side? So let's say I have rotation at this side, um, no displacements on either side, no um, rotation at this side, and no load along the length. Well, if I draw this displaced shape, it looks something like this, comes to zero rotation at the end. This is a special case where I know that my inflection point is always going to be exactly one third of your span away from the fixed end. That's a guarantee and that is an exact answer. Another exact answer is if you have deflection only on one side and no rotation on either side. So this will look like sort of an S shaped curve and the inflection point is always exactly at mid span. So that's at one half L right there. So now we can use these canonical systems to generalize to any kind of beam system. And we're going to do this with two separate examples. Our first example is going to be this two span system. I have a 24 foot span and an 18 foot span, and I have uniform loading along the whole length. First, let's look at our degree of indeterminacy. I have three unknowns, one, two, three. And my objective for this problem is to find these three unknowns. I only get two useful equations of equilibrium, so my degree of indeterminacy is one. So here is where we learn how many hinges do I need to add. In the previous problem, when I had the fixed fix case, I added two. In this problem, I'm only going to add one hinge because we add a number of hinges equal to the degree of indeterminacy. So in this case, because I have degree of indeterminacy of one, I'm going to add one hinge. Now, if we draw the deflected shape, we'll draw it something like this. We know it's going to deflect somewhat upwards there. Um, both spans will deflect downwards, of course, but the longer span is going to de deflect down more, which means I'm going to have a rotation in that direction at my center support. There's going to be two inflection points in this system, one in each span. I only need one of them, however, so I know I have one right here, and I'm probably going to have one about there. So if I'm trying to locate these, We'll draw my two distances here. Because of my rotation right here, and because this side span looks something like a pin on this end and a fixed end with a rotation at the other end, we know that this distance is going to be something less than 0 0.25 times its span length, which is 24 feet. So that's going to be, we'll say, approximately five feet. And that's just a rough guess here. Whereas, my other inflection point in the right-hand span is going to be greater than 0.25 feet times its span length of 18 feet. Now, I could get an estimate for that number. However, I don't need to because, again, I only need one hinge here because I only have degree of indeterminacy of one. So I'm going to pick this one for the one hinge that I'll add to my system. The other one I'm going to ignore. It turns out I don't need it. So here's my system with that hinge added. So here's my hinge at five feet from that center support. Now this is just a determinant structural analysis. So we can go through using standard determinant structural analysis to find all my reactions. So 
It's easiest to start with this left-hand side because it basically looks like a simply supported beam. We have two forces and no moment at either end, and we'll find that these two forces are 28.5 kips and 28.5 kips um, because of the symmetry there. I'm also gonna have an equal and opposite force down here, 28.5 kips. And I have two reactions left to find. We'll call this R1 and we'll call this R2. If I want to find R1, I can take a sum of moments equal to zero at point R2, and that will give me R1 is equal to 80.5 kips. I can also consider my sum of forces in the Y direction is equal to zero to give me R2, and we'll find that R2 is equal to 17 kips exactly. So we found all our reactions, not too bad. How close is this answer? So if we plug this into a structural analysis software or use some sort of indeterminate structural analysis on this problem, we would find that this is supposed to be 28.69 kips. Not bad. R1 is approximately, or exactly, excuse me, 80.06 kips and R2 is exactly 17.25 kips. So all my reactions in this case were within one kip. If you're doing a multiple choice exam, you can probably get the right answer just from this alone without actually having to go through the exact analysis um, because our approximate analysis in this case was that close. So this method definitely works. Let's try one more example. In this example, we have a three span system, but we only have load on that center span. All three spans are equal. I should also mention that our modulus and our moment of inertia are constant along the span. If things are changing, then this whole method kind of goes out the window. Let's start by getting our degree of indeterminacy. We know that we have some reactions here at each of those points and two reaction moments, one at each end. So we have six unknowns in this, four forces, two moments and I only get two equations of equilibrium that are useful, so therefore my degree of indeterminacy is four. That means I'm going to need four hinges. I need hinges equal to my degree of indeterminacy. Let's sketch our deflected shape to see where these hinges lie. So the middle span is gonna deflect downwards, of course, and the two end spans are gonna look something like this, downwards in the middle, and then up, and then down like that again. So I know I'm gonna have inflection points in the two ends, and then two of them, we'll just draw them somewhere right there in the middle span. I don't exactly know where those are gonna be quite yet. If we look at these two outer spans, I know that, and that's an exact answer, because we have a rotation here at this support, and also a rotation right here. There's no displacement on either end, zero rotation here and zero load. So this distance right here is exactly one third of my span length. So this distance is exactly 10 feet. And that is, again, an exact answer. So same thing on this side, 10 feet to the location of that inflection point. And for my center span, I see that I have rotation that is drawing my inflection points closer to the support because this deflected shape looks pretty close to a simply supported uh, beam at this point, but not exactly. So therefore this distance, which is gonna be the same as this distance over here, is going to be less than 0 0.2 times the span length. Again, it's 0 0.2 in this case because the center span looks closer to the fixed fixed case rather than the pinned fixed case. And so the inflection points for fixed fixed cases is 0.2 times their span length. Now, I don't know exactly what that number is. Again, it's less than 0.2 times three, so I'm just gonna approximate that. Let's say it's about three feet, and that's close enough. Now we can see for this problem, I do need all four of my inflection points because I have a degree of indeterminacy of four and therefore need four hinges. So placing those hinges on my structure, here is now my revised system where I have hinges located at 10 foot and then three foot from the center supports and then 10 foot from that end. Let's do some determinate structural analysis. So I'll start with this middle part, which I've just broken out right here. We can find those two reactions right here. They obviously have to be equal and they're both going to be 24 kips. 
Just as a side note, if you want to find your moment at mid-span at this location, we know our moment diagram in this portion is going to look something like this. Because we know we have zero moment here at this end and zero moment here at this end. So I can find this mid-span moment here as though it's a simply supported beam of length 24 feet. Therefore, this can be 1 8th WL squared, where that's the moment for a simply supported beam. So that is going to be 1 8th times 2 kips per foot multiplied by 24 feet squared is 144 kip feet as my approximate mid-span moment. And I can find that without knowing any of my reactions. So that's pretty cool. Next, let's keep moving on. I need to apply my 24 kip force down right there. And I'm going to find, I have a reaction here. We'll call that R1. And I have some force down here. It's going to be V. I can start off with a sum of moments equal to zero at this location of V. And that is going to tell me that R1 is equal to 34.05 kips. And then if I consider a sum of forces in the y direction, I'm going to see that V in this case is going to be 4.05 kips and that is acting down. So translating that equal and opposite force over here, I have 4.05 kips acting up. That means obviously I also have 4.05 kips acting down right here. And then I have a end moment right here, which I can solve for using some of moments, and it's just going to be 4.05 times 10. So that's 40.5 kip feet. All right, so I have all my reactions, my reaction moment, force, R1 right here, and that obviously is going to be symmetric with whatever's going on on this side because we do have a symmetric problem. So we'll leave those off. What is the exact answer for my end moment? It's 50 kip feet. So I was about 10 kip feet off. Not horrible. At least I'm in the right bar ballpark, um, but it is about a 20% error. That's pretty typical for approximate analysis. However, my reaction force, I find that that is five kips. So again, about a 20% error, but I'm only one kip off, so not too bad. And my reaction force at these center uh, points is exactly 35 kips instead of 34.05 kips. So again, about one kip off. Not bad. For our mid-span moment right here, if we do the math, we'll find that this is 125 kip feet. So again, not too bad, um, but we're about 20 kip feet off. If we wanted a slightly better estimate, these two distances are actually about 3.82 feet from their support, not three feet. So if I had assumed that this was four feet instead of three feet, I would have got a slightly better approximation. And of course, if I had assumed that this was exactly 3.82 feet away from those supports, I would have gotten an answer that is very, very close to the exact one. And that wraps up our discussion for approximate beam analysis. Again, the whole premise is to find locations of zero moment known as the inflection points, place hinges there. We need a number of hinges equal to our degree of indeterminacy, and then we can solve a determinate system. And a lot of times these determinate systems are not too bad. So as always, I hope you learned something. Please subscribe. I'll see you next time.